right into it, shall we? So yes, yeah, so we've got another Shavana deck. And I like the direction of this deck again. I think um, if you caught the last time we played this champion, I mentioned that I think people on average are putting her in decks that have just too many mediocre cards or too many kind of clunky cards on average. Um, a lot of the dragons in this game have a much higher converted mana cost than a lot of other, a lot more aggressive cards. And I think at, at the base level, Shavana is a very, fairly aggressive champion. And I think on average, she's pretty self-enabling. So uh, her level up mechanic here is the reason why she's paired with other dragons a lot of the time. She says, I've seen dragon allies deal 12 plus damage. Um, she gets 1-1 one, one when she attacks. So like um, an, at an attack step, a block, an attack step, Something like single combat or concerted strike. These are all really good ways to get this level up pretty much on her own. Her leveled mode gains fury, as well as a slightly bigger attack bonus when she attacks. And every turn she generates a strafing strike, which lets uh, something fight something else and heal it if it's a dragon. Um, the only other dragon this build is playing is Screeching Dragon. I think this is very reasonable. So uh, five mana, four, five with Challenger and Fury, just very reasonable piece of top end that also gives you a touch of interaction to help you keep the board in check. This is just a very good uh, mid-range aggressive threat. So between Screeching Dragon and Shavana, I think uh, that's more than enough dragons with the other tools that we have going on. Past that, uh, you know, Shavana can level herself in just two attacks when you pair her with things like, you know, Mentor of the Stones, Zenith Blade, Bastion, other things that give her plus attack, Pale Cascade, things like that. So um, the second champion we're pairing with here is Tarek, which is another very good aggressive champion. So his support says he gives him and his supported ally tough. And then he recasts whatever was the last single target spell on him onto the unit that he's supporting. So he is very good to double up things like Bastion or especially effects like uh, Pale Cascade where you get to go ahead and move a pump spell over to your other thing and draw another card. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games here with this and uh, see how it goes. Hey, Zombie Token. Thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate it. Welcome to some Rune Terror in the morning. I would heavily encourage you to take like five to 10 minutes or so and um, check out the, just install it yourself and play through some games, learning learning new card, learning just the base mechanics, how the back and forth goes, goes a long way towards uh, understanding the gameplay. Um, so in this matchup, they are an aggressive deck we know by their champions and the region combination of misfortune and gangplank i'm gonna go ahead and mulligan mentor the stones for sure i think i meant mulligan shavana too um these are a little bit on the expensive side but they're good pieces to have on four and five so i'm gonna mulligan these two looking for some one and two mana units so we can uh, play to the board quickly here against their aggro deck Yeah, I think, I think Hellblade is probably my favorite video game of all time. After playing through and finishing it up, it's really, really well done. It, like, basically nails every, every bit of, every bit of everything I want out of a game, basically. So, they have the attack token here to start. I'm gonna go ahead and play Solari Shieldbreaker out here. This gets a temporary bonus the turn it comes into play from its Daybreak ability. So unfortunately, it won't have the extra toughness on their turn, but we get a free attack in with it here, which is nice. If our opponent does not open on attacks, if they play something out before they attack, we'll get to deploy Solari Shieldbreaker. Perfect. So... This card's great on defense. The turn it comes down because it gets that temporary health boost. So they don't really have profitable attacks in now. Hey, good morning, Big Delta. So they're basically just throwing this away to get their two triggers in. So I get a free block here to eat this, but each of these triggers deals damage to me. So we can mouse over the eye to confirm we're going to 14 here.
Yeah, I just responded to you, Silence. So there's a uh, copyrighted song in the credits that roll at the end there. So I had to pull pull the audio out for it. One of their uh, their partners they worked with for sound design, they just put one of their actual songs in at the end that they don't have the distribution rights to. So this gets a temporary bonus every turn, so it's kind of like taking a free point of damage. One, one suggestion... Oh, the game audio's off. Yep, thank you, fixed. Um, I was doing something in my settings. Spe speaking of audio fixed, um, one of... Uh, one of the... We, we've been talking about how I wouldn't be surprised if they made some changes to the opponent's archetype next balance patch. And one of the things someone suggested was turning Noxian Fervor to slow, so you're not able to just get free blocks in like they just did there. That's a really interesting suggestion, I think. Would go uh would go a long way towards uh making it more difficult for their deck to race and turning turning bad blocks and stuff in. It would also make things like Vile Beast and Grasp much better against their archetype because they can't kill their own stuff in response to the Naive Life game. It'll be, this feels like this feels like a tough deck to balance because it just has so many individually like efficient cards in it. I don't think there's like one single card in their archetype that's overtuned. Do not test my I'm gonna open on Laurent Protégé here, I think. Break their spirits and their swords. And we'll see what they do from here. Uh, this is another challenger unit. This has chal this has challenger as well, so I think I wanna just kill as many of their things as possible this turn. This can give something challenger to give me a third thing to kill. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and deploy Tayari here. There's a good chance we get make it rain and they kill some of our stuff. Uh, the boss fight's difficult to help blade. I don't think they're they're too bad. Yeah, and there's a there's a the it does a, the good thing a lot of story driven games do where you can adjust the difficulty as you play through. That's so unfortunate. I don't mind this dying, but the fact that it dealt two to our dome there is a really big deal. So, if we were still at 8 here, I think we'd have a pretty good shot, but the fact that we're at 6 means we're basically dead to any 2 burn spells, so we're probably dead. They have another deal 3 here. That's the insure. Go down to 5. 8 versus 6 is pretty similar. Changes some of their, some of their lethal lines, but not many of them. Gonna be a real, real close game here overall. Like we have lethal on the following turn if they don't kill us this turn, but there's a good chance we don't get a following turn. Be nothing left when I'm done. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Lead on Solari soldier and see what they do. Oh, five versus six means this makes decimate lethal, right?
Is it true they have to balance three to four weeks ahead because of mobile storage guidelines and patches, patches? I have, I have no idea. Believe it or not, I don't work for I don't work for Riot Games, so. I am un unfamiliar with how their how their balancing works. Uh, that's just lethal, right? This could talking about cards that could potentially be overtuned. This could this could definitely be the one. So when this attacks, it deals three damage to all of our stuff and our nexus, and then it overwhelms as, and then it overwhelms from this. So. I basically just don't have blocks, right? Like, I could Zenith Blade here to here, and then this will have two toughness, and my Nexus is going down to two, and this will do there. So the person I just timed out that are like, hey, Jeff, do you sound like shit this morning? That, that's just, like, one of those things that, like, you should basically never go into a Twitch chat and say. Like, I get that there's a chance that you, like, probably mean well, but, like... Yeah, there, there's no point in asking that. Either you're stating the obvious and the person who's streaming knows they don't sound good or don't feel great, or they, they feel fine and you're coming in and telling them they sound like crap. There's just like actual, it's actual, it's actually just a zero upside statement. And I get that it's probably not a question asked in malice. It's probably a, oh, I hope you feel better. But it, like at the baseline, on average, it just makes the person you're talking to feel bad. If we had Zenith bladed the dragon first, we would have not taken lethal from the gangplank. Is that true? The dragon would have been seven toughness. No, we still we still would have died, right? The dragon would have been seven toughness because it was on three. And it would have taken three from Gangplank, which means it would have been on four, and we would have been on two, and Gangplank would have overwhelmed for two. So that's not that's not true. Mulligan the Zenith Blade. Keep these others here. Let's get it, crew. We'll see if they open on attacks next turn or not. So again, you could attack the turn you play something in Rune Terra. But if they play a unit, I get an opportunity to play a unit. So they should probably start their turn by attacking because whatever they can play out is probably worse than like my shield breaker here. <laughs> now I have a shield breaker with extra toughness. They don't have fantastic attacks now. What game you played last night? Uh, we played Psychonauts last night, and it was okay. If I'm being honest, um, I enjoyed the second session less than the first. The the platforming and the levels, the, the writing was still great. I think the Psychonauts probably has some of the best comedy writing in any video game I've ever played, but the quality of the platforming was definitely lower last night than the first night. I'm okay treating this for this or this. I'm gonna go ahead and start by attacking here. And then I think it's important that I just use use my mana here. So I'm gonna go ahead and single combat these two. This also allows me to utilize some of that extra temporary toughness on this. There's some potential upside to holding the single combat for Shavana, but. And just keeping the board clear in case they open on attacks next turn is ideal. No prey, no pay. The dragon's rage claws to get out. 
Cover me, Crackshot. You've got it, Captain. Well, draw drawing another one actually isn't super useful here because, um... What's the word I'm searching for? I don't have mana to use it this turn, right? More two knocks. So we're taking six here. Their misfortune is dead. The question is, do they have another? It's a nice pickup. Uh, so I, I unfortunately cannot... Tarek and do something else that being said I think I'm still just Tarek'ing this turn because I think getting as many bodies in play as possible is important unfortunately now I just can't attack maybe I'm just supposed to open on attacks with her because both both Jack and um Gangplank kind of gummed up the board there in a way that I couldn't attack want a feather here and just continue going wide we get concerted strike these two to kill this inside of combat and then we get okay blocks across the rest of the stuff now you so we'll get to kill this before it overwhelms us nothing but the stink of glory <laughs> <laughs> to work. What did I think of Outer Wilds? Uh, the game itself was very reasonable, but it did the, what seems like kind of a typical gameplay loop that a lot of games do, where like, when you die at a portion, you have to replay a bunch of the portion you just went through, that I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of. I know, I know that's something that a lot of people enjoy, because it's something that's pretty, pretty popular that games tend to do. But it's something that I personally am not a huge fan of. No further. Come face me. I've come, I think I've come to learn that when people describe a game as punishing, what they actually mean is the game just doesn't respect your time. That's what, that's what, that's what it actually means. When people, I didn't, for a long time, I didn't really understand what people meant by this game is punishing. And what they actually mean when they say a game is punishing is this game, um makes you waste a bunch of your time if you're uh if you're if you lose part of it yeah zelda's been great horizon zero dawn's been great we're gonna keep doing those every every saturday and sunday until until we're through with them Just do this. To protect all. I mean, it's not, it's not even that. I'm not even talking about making a player repeat game mechanics until, until they understand how it works silence. I'm talking more so about 
making a player repeat game mechanics that they're all they've already mastered so they can get back to the one that they either need to get good at that that's the part that really gets me about like that's what turned me off of hollow knight was like there was like the actual platforming part wasn't too bad and i understood the mechanics of combat with it but every time i got to a new enemy if we died at that new enemy i had to repeat five to ten minutes of platforming that i already understood how to do to then get back to try the actual enemy I had a hard time with again. Yeah. I have to go back through the easy stuff to get back to the hard part. We mulligan everything but Shaybana here. So Trundle, Trindabir. They're with Iona is an interesting pairing, but probably still a controlling deck. I agree that that interaction feels strange, Mike. The fact that you can sleep with the fishes and Noxie and Fervor a keg and get the extra damage from the keg feels feels strange and unintuitive. No two drop when we're attacking at evens feels bad, but we do get to go protege into Shavana, so like not the worst. I actually really liked Hades gameplay it just the difference in play patterns that different enemies or different weapons had in Hades didn't do enough to make it feel it didn't have enough replayability for me. So, like, I enjoyed the first time we went through... Probably the first couple times we went through the different areas. But once we once we were through each of the areas, like, once to twice, the novelty kind of wore off. The trolls are gone! Yeah, I, I agree. Hades, Hades was good for me. We played two sessions, and I enjoyed most of my two sessions with it. Was not a huge fan of Hollow Knight. Open on attacks here. We just hook both of these and level her up. I kind of like that. Harsh. Harsh Winds continues to be very, very good against Demacia Dex. Um, hmm. Do I want to turn this Hush into a game uh, deal for? Am I gonna am I gonna get a better rate than deal for with this Hush? Probably not. Holding on to that for now. Uh, Hushing Trindamir does stop. Does stop his level up. That is that is accurate. I don't know. We're the we're the beatdown in this matchup. So like using using my hush to push points of damage seems meaningful. Like, I think if Trindamir comes down, our end goal is, like, attacking around him.
So I think with this play, we're just going to go ahead and concerted strike the Trundle here. They have to have another Harsh Winds to beat this. Even if they do have Harsh Winds, it's like their entire turn. So, like, if they don't have a way to kill Shivana here, and they don't have a way to stop this from happening... Okay, they're playing, they're playing the dime. Which Shivana's leveling regardless, right? Morning, Bean Z. Am I playing out a 2-2 to attack with next turn? No, I'm, I'm not familiar with that title, Crazy Duck. Uh, I've not a Razatune. I'm planning to do my Gauntlet on Monday morning. Monday. Monday morning will probably be Gauntlet Day in Hooglandia. Because the Gauntlets go live after I'm offline on Friday. And then I'm often not going to be doing... Like, I'm only doing one deck this morning. And I'm largely only doing a deck this morning. So I'm doing uh, Hacks that he's a sponsored segment. So I like to do a little bit of other games before I do a sponsored segment. Do not test me. So next turn, I'm going to have eight total mana. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I do this so we can open attacks. He's gonna give us a strafing strike. They're just not supposed to attack with these. I guess if they want to block either of these, it means strafing strike can trade with this trundle, which is nice. So, do I want to use this to trade here? I could also use this to heal this and make it bigger. I think I'd rather do this, and then we'll use this to finish this off and heal our Screeching Dragon up a little bit. They will not. Whichever whichever one strikes first grows up. And I think I'd rather have this one grow. So whichever whichever one you click on first strikes first. Although maybe because I'm growing this with the strafing strike. I'm supposed to grow this one instead. Grant challenger card. Second trundle is a little annoying. If shield shield bear here at least for a six toughness blocker. I think I think we just use this as game six here. The alternative is death, so that seems like a less than ideal plan. Atrocity. They're playing Ionia as their second uh, region, not Shadow Isles. And even even if they had Shadow Isles, I don't think we're in a position where we can actually play around Atrocity. Morning, 
morning, King Gecko. What will you have? I don't mean that doesn't really do anything useful, right? Tarek and the Shavana spell. Um, the way Tarek and Shavana spell interact, you don't get to give. You'll give Challenger to a second thing, but you don't get to challenge with the second thing this combat because you have to pull what you're challenging before you hit declare attacks. And if you haven't hit declare attacks, Tarek doesn't cast the spell over yet. Yeah, yeah I just have so many cards. It's a good. It's a good example of like why Tarek's just like. He, Tarek probably needs a redesign. He's, uh, he's really just not good enough at what he does. He, he's an aggressive champ that just needs so many other moving pieces to go with him. Mono Fiora, eh? We're supposed to keep single combats here. They tend to have a ton of frostbites. I also don't know that, like, mulliganing for cheap units is necessarily the play here against Fiora, who wants to have Challenger and kill your stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a he's a two, he's he's like a good example of like a two or ten card. Like he he never helps you catch up when you start ahead. He keeps you ahead. That is probably the best draw on our deck. So, Entreat is why they play only Fiora as their only champion. Because this draws a champion out of their deck. So, when they play only Fiora, this guarantees that they draw her with it. So do I want to go Tarek into Dragon or Shavana into Dragon? I feel like Tarek in, or Shavana into Dragon is probably good. I don't really have any pump spells to pair with Tarek. Uh, I am live every Saturday and Sunday evening, Bane Insane. I'm also live sometimes in the mornings. I post my schedule every single week on Mondays, or on, on the Saturday before, sorry, not Mondays, on the Saturday before. So, last Saturday, I posted that I would be live today. You can find my schedule pinned on my Twitter. You can find that on my website. If you're a sub, you can find it in the announcements channel on the subs discord. It's also listed below the stream in the stream information section. I'm considering uh, using some of my, my funding to print my schedule out and uh, physically mail it to everyone in the United States as well. I serve my people with pride. Feel like that could be a good way to reach more people. That's a good pull to pair with the Tarek, but I think I would rather get this down to try and challenge this down. In conjunction with the Hush, we might be able to kill this. I don't know, it's tough because like not only does my opponent have pump spells, but they also have frostbites. Skywriting, that's good.
Newspaper ads wave of the future. The real secret to pumping up the numbers on your Twitch stream. Take out an ad in the local newspaper. A mailing list. <laughs> So I get to do this, but if they have a frostbite, a flash freeze here, we're in trouble. IRC channel. You're in an IRC channel right now, Hamblin. Right at this at this very moment, you are in an IRC channel. Man, the barrier, the barrier even prevents her from getting her level up. That's rough. Be a carrier pigeon. <laughs> I'll get I'll get the boys training the birds. I think we could. I think we could make training carrier pigeons a class during homeschooling. Concerted strike does get around the barrier. Which is which is nice. Look lively, soldier. Am I playing this out this turn? It's gonna pass. Oh, my schedule to come via official presidential announcement. You mean Twitter post? I post my things on Twitter. Twitter, Twitter posts count as uh, official presidential announcements now, right? This being down to two toughness means it is exposed to brittle steel in addition to flash freeze now. Is worth noting. Yeah, I mean, like, like, there, I just, I don't have anything to play around those things, right? So, like, I basically, I basically am just, like, crossing my fingers and hoping, like, whatever trick they have that Pale Cascade beats it. And you're right, Pale Cascade does not beat a lot of their tricks, but it's what we've got. And they can't beat a Pale Cascade. They're dead. They were. They were all in on their queen chat, and when the queen fell, so did they. Twitter told me the birds are robots to how I think you can hack if you so the the psychonauts game that we played last night, part of what you do in that game for the platforming levels is you're going into people's minds. And one of the characters whose mind we went into last night in the playthrough was a conspiracy theorist. And like, when you're going through his mind, like the mailboxes have eyes in them, the heads pop off of um, like flamingos that are in people's yards and cameras come up out of them and take pictures. It's re it was really, really well done. If you struggle to beat your Mana Fiora opponents in the way that I just beat that opponent, uh, I would recommend being luckier. It's a, it's a strong line. Alright, we're attacking on odds and we have Screeching Dragon. Having, having Solari, ha attacking on odds and having Solari Soldier on one should make this matchup a lot better than it's felt the last two times we played it. On the the guilty were bad. My journey begins here and ends at the top. They're updating the birds to 5G. Take the first step. 
Uh, we played uh, Undertale as a uh, variety game. That one was fine. I don't think we're going to end up playing it again because based on the sub poll this week, it wasn't particularly popular with folks, but I'd entertain another JRPG, yeah. Played, played a lot of Pokemon as a child, believe it or not. Shield Shield Bearer is just so good against aggro when you get to get it before, get it down before they attack. Fall heretic. Fall heretic. We're gonna take two here down to sixteen. I feel like them killing my my unit with that instead of hitting my face is a big win for us. Wonder if they have another make it rain here with that play. Definitely a Screeching Dragon eat your misfortune this turn, though. Every way is a path. Do I want to attack this into this in order to give this two extra toughness? I think I do, because knocking this down to two life means it trades with my shield bearer, so that's okay for me. Yeah, I, I agree, Mike Long. I think I think there's a lot of um, changes they could make to like change the power level of this deck a lot. But in, in my opinion, the thing I would like to see change the most is how much reach the deck has. I think that's the kind of fundamental fundamental issue with the archetype in terms of how strong it is is how much how much reach it has available to it. Do I want to do this turn? I think I'm just playing out a two two. I'll become who I was always meant to be. Probably want to concerted strike something this turn just to like get the just to use the resources. Yeah, I agree, Silence. For for the record, I think um, I think card games tend to be best when aggro is one of the best archetypes in them. In fact, I think a lot of the issues that we had in Magic the Gathering in the last little bit is because they nerfed aggro too much. It's a it's a tough it's a tough line to balance for sure. Game game design isn't easy. There's a lot of lot of variables to consider. Again, am I supposed to do this now? I'm probably just supposed to wait for like a gangplank or a jack, I think, on this one. I think I want to use some of my mana proactively this turn. I'm just gonna go ahead and bash in this and make it a little bigger. It's really, it's really kind of funny how, like, waiting a week and a half for changes you know are coming at some point can feel like a long time in Runeterra. And then, like, you compare it to, like, the, the, like, three plus months you often wait in Magic. And it's just like, oh, right. Uh, we can kill them next turn, right? So we'll do this, we'll single combat the spider, and then we'll open on attacks. Three, three plus months is being generous for some wizard's changes. 
Yeah, yeah. And that was, like I said, I think the key difference between that game that we just won pretty handily there and the games where we lost was two things. Three things, actually. One, we were attacking on odds. Two, we had Solari Soldier on one. Three, we had Dragon on five. Hearthstone is updating their free-to-play model next month. Great. I wonder, I wonder if they'll update their pay-to-play structure at all. Because honestly, the pay-to-play structure in that game sucks too. I'm gonna wait to play this till my turn so that way I can play it with the extra plus one plus one to hit them for an extra point of damage here. Or get extra damage on this. Put in playing uh the deep here with twisted fate instead of Maokai. They have Twisted Fate here, they could gold card my Shavana, but if they gold card her, my challenger unit kills their Twisted Fate, so that doesn't seem particularly good for them. Alright, deal. Arnold gets their best room. <laughs> seeing to be to be political for a brief moment. See seeing how Arnold Schwarzenegger like interacts with people and presents himself and the things that he talks about caring about, I think like really highlights how how different the GOP has become in even just the last decade since he was a governor in their party. Cause when he when he was the governor of California, he was he was a Republican on the ticket. And every everything I've seen out of him to the things that he says are important to the things that he he worked towards, like this is very, very different compared to like what McConnell in the Senate does and what Trump does as president. Yeah, yeah, he he ran as a Republican and he won. There used to there used to be some difference. All right, so what are we doing here? We got a ton of permutations. We got eight mana. I get to play two of these cards out. I guess I could technically play a three three and a two, but. Look lively, soldier. I think I want to get Tarek down this turn. Tarek Tarek plus Bastion sounds kind of appealing. I feel about Shivana Tarek over Shivana Orient Sol. I am not a fan of Shivana Orient Sol. I feel like Orient Sol is not is not an ideal top end for that uh, that archetype. There's not an ideal. This is this is an aggressive champion, and Orient Sol is decidedly not an aggressive champion. Do I want to save this? I almost feel like I don't. I think I just let this happen. She's at like zero out of twelve. I think I want to like bastion this and then move the bastion over to this and like clean out a bunch of their board here. The fight 
never ends. I don't, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of this particular build, but I do know I'm also not a huge fan of the, the Orient Soul configurations. You should put the 2-4 first there. Uh, yes, if I put the 2-4 first because of their life, life, uh, life, I should put, I should put both of these first and end up damage. It's a good, good catch in the order mattering. I was thinking about the 1-1 one, one dying and getting them two, but yeah, they had the, like, steel one as well. The water rises. Well. It's a big, it's a big boy. I think I need to play this out so I can chump block this. I don't want to chump block with either of these. And then I think the line to win here involves just a bunch of challenger units hooking this off to the side. One foot in front of the other. That was how I did it. The question is, do I want to open attacks or do I want a zenith blade to start? Yeah, yeah, I think we want a zenith blade. With the Pale Cascade, it might even be right to, like, Zenith Blade, Zenith Blade, Pale Cascade copy, depending on what they do. These both have Spell Shield on them, so, like, I'm not worried about Ruination here. Salvage being their start seems good for us. This this does make Sea Monsters 4 cheaper, so we could see our opponent deploy a couple of things here still. Admire me later. The problem with not Zenith Blading this 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 turn is that. If they play a unit out when they get priority here, I can only challenge two things, and then they have a 1-1 one, one to chump block my Screeching Dragon. So I kind of I kind of want the dragon to have overwhelm when we attack this turn. So, Tarek gets to level here before he, uh, before he supports. So these two things are unkillable, undamageable, at least here. The problem is they're going to get a full turn to deploy a bunch of scary monsters next turn. And they're at, they're at 20 currently. And these, these will take damage on defense next turn because, again, like, these cards have, like, one very specific role and it's attacking. So, he didn't level himself, boss. He leveled when Teari supported. 
So he was one off of leveling when this support happened. So this support happened, he leveled, and then this support happened. So you're right. If he levels himself, it's only tough for the turn. But he didn't level himself, he leveled this. Oh, this has Challenger. Yeah, you're right. I should have hooked. I should have hooked the 6-6 six, six here. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good catch. If they have the sea monster that gives everything fearsome, we're probably dead. Because I'm going to be forced to chump block with my good units in that case. But yeah, this could have been an 8-8. They'd be at 6 higher life, but this would be dead. Excuse me? What is in your hand? I think I Bastion to gain 13 here. Stand resolute. The guilty would bend. So this is fearsome, which again means it can only be blocked by things with 3 plus power, so... I don't really want to block with either of these. Yeah, like, what is their hand? Is it just, like, a bunch of vengeances of ruinations and stuff? They could have, like, a bunch of Vile Feasts. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this dies to Vile Feast. That's true. They could have been trying to force a bad jump to like, because like these, these are, I'm all in on these two, right? Like if they force one of those off the board, I probably can't win. So they could, they could have more threats and we're just hoping to force me into a block there. That block, that block does also keep us out of Nautilus atrocity range, which is nice. Uh, atrocity cost six. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I could certainly try. So there's the vile feast we assumed they had. That explains one of the cards in their hand. I wouldn't be surprised if they have another. Although, Vile Feasting my uh, Gem Bearer here is actually kind of good for us because it uh, lets me pump up the jam on my dragon. I could have like a Warping Whale here. Warping Whale is pretty decent. It would gain them three. It would pop my Spell Shields and it would kill two of my things. Popping. Popping Spell Shields is a big deal if they have something like uh, Vengeance in hand. Okay, so this, this implies they have Vengeance, right? Or that. Yeah. Try. I'll try one more before we call the day, but Outrageous. I think I, I think I might be off of Terra exhibitions until he gets a rework. He's pretty, pretty consistently underwhelming.
I mean, it's actually it's actually very very easy to describe why Tarek isn't particularly good. Yeah, yeah, we've done Hack City once before, Cody. So I Tarek the the Yasuo comparison on Tarek I don't think makes a ton of sense actually, because Yasuo needs a very specific subset of cards with him and those cards are bad without him whereas Tarek needs other cards with him but he's bad without other cards hey good games orange good luck in the rest of your ladder today i think i think Tarek Tarek's problems actually highlight how important being flexible is in rune terra Tarek's problems mostly stem from the fact that he's only good at doing one thing. And in Rune Terra, the gameplay tends to be dynamic enough that being good at doing one thing tends to not be good enough. Tarek, Tarek isn't e even even the aggro decks in Rune Terra, like Pirate Aggro, for example, tend to be fairly interactive in a number of spots they have that flexibility where if they're on the back foot they can take that defensive role and Tarek Tarek just doesn't have that modal flexibility in him he does one thing and he does it really well but you're just not frequently enough in a position in rune Terra where only that thing is what you want to be doing We have been help, help by being suppressed. No prey, no pay. The dragon's rage claws. Suppressor huge here. Suppressor is the difference between being able to single combat this and not. I smell fear. Love Easy block. I am here. I gotta show you the sights of Bilgewater. The sights are fine. The smells, on the other hand. So, he makes Shavana tough. And then I get to single combat. These two. So she's one damage away from leveling up now. Next turn we're going up to six mana plus a bank. So we have seven all together. So we can single combat and concerted strike. They're concerted striking this. We single combat here in response. This unfortunately means that my Shavana doesn't level, but I get to kill their Quinn at least. The, the problem here is we're kind of behind at this point. I guess we're a little bit ahead on board, but I'm out of cards in hand and my opponent still has three cards. Shivana unfortunately has to survive damage in order to level up. Uh, I have not had a chance to play in the Singleton event yet. Planning, planning to do Singleton Monday morning on stream. Apparently my opponent's remaining cards are not particularly good. Victory is a thing of beauty. 
too bad. It's too bad you don't get to see that thing of beauty too often, Tarek. <laughs> We get a rematch against the Deep. This variation of the Deep is playing uh, Maokai instead of Twisted Fate, though. Uh, a 3 and a 5 when we're attacking on uh, Evens feels real bad, but I think I keep these. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan the Dragon, too. Loving Runeterra, but low-key annoyed that you got me into a new card game. <laughs> hey, at least this one's cheaper and respects your time more than more than the other one does. You know, baby, baby steps. Do I want to put a damage on this in order to put two damage on here? I think the answer is no because of Vile Feast. I think this attack is not great. It's a good draw. And if they want to kill my gem producer here, that's fine for us. And like, that's something you should really think about in situations like this. Like, I I played this out knowing they had this card, which is basically me saying, okay, I'd rather you hook this than hook my tutu. Do I want to throw this away to enable, to pump up Tarek? I think so. Getting Tarek big enough to attack through these seems good. Gems, gems are, gems are a little bit outrageous, which is nice. We'll get to go dragon next turn into gem plus pale cascade the following turn. We don't have one more mana to hush this uh, this elusive off. Yes, getting Tarek out of range of a blood fish is also very very reasonable. So we do that. We do this. here. I think it's right to open attacks here as opposed to playing out Shivana. We can def definitely do that, Beansy. Just like, there's going to be five of them, right? So you just want me to, like, pick two of them? There's the, there'll be five in five different regions, is my understanding. Just, like, pick my favorite two and build a deck with two of them. I'm not sure what you're looking for. Now the question is, do I want to single combat now? I think I want to wait till after she's in play to single combat so she's leveled. Hey, thanks for the 46 months, Dows. 
I really appreciate the support. Are the sub did the sub notification not pop up? No, it looks like it's working. They are three cards away from the deep. Inflate here to start, I think. And then I think my plan is to single combat this idiot. I put this here and single combat she levels. I don't hate that. Oh, this level's uh Derek too. There were two atrocities in that toss. There were. That's fine. Atrocity Atrocity is one of those cards where you basically can't play around it most games anyways, so. I'm not even really sure that's relevant. There is nowhere left to go but up. There are none like me. I think I'm just banking spell mana here. You ever seen a Shavana eat a Nautilus chat? How? She's a she's a hungry gal, chat. Hungry, hungry gal. What could they have had to make it not work? She can't take damage or die this turn. They could have had the Riptide, I guess. Riptide, Riptide's the card they could have had. They could have had second Nautilus. Hushes, hushes only a unit. So, they probably have another Oblitifish, right? So, 
So if I go gem you, zenith blade you, they can't obliterate this. So they definitely have an Oblita Fish. I'm not as strong as you were. What if I can't make it? No, you have nothing to prove but to yourself. Crumble. Wow, super punished. Just should not have played this out. Super punishing. Yeah, yeah, if I would have I would have not played this, I could have struck their thing. The enemies of day will fall. We will not suffer unbelievers. They will not escape punishment. Stand resolute. Shatter them. Never submit. Please die. Alright. Yeah, so my my sequencing at the end there was a little bit suspect. Ended up ended up not mattering. I mean, like, and that's a good example of Tarek getting getting to get going, right? Like, when when he does get going, he's very good. Again, it's just, like, the problem is his flexibility, right? So, like, when you get the steamroller of Tarek rolling downhill, he runs over everything. The problem is that when you don't have that momentum behind him to have all the pieces line up, all, all he does is is just sit there and be a 2-4 for 4, which that stat line's not particularly good, right? Like, even even Shavana is at least like a 3-4 for 4, and she levels, works towards leveling herself when she's um, when she's playing defense, whereas, like, Tarek basically doesn't even level if you're not attacking. Like, can't, targeting seven of your things is a tough, a tough, tall order. Something that's not particularly likely to happen without also supporting some things by being offensive, so... I think, I think overall, unless, um, I think Tarek's probably a champion I'm going to avoid taking submissions for on stream moving forward until we either get the next card drop in December or until he gets a little bit of a rework because he, he's just, his only always aggressive role doesn't fit with his mana cost, right? So like, if you want a card like this to be linear, he needs to be cheaper and at, at his, his cost. He's just not flexible enough. You could level Tarek in the deck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and I mean, like, and like I said, they're they're aware of that. They're aware that Tarek is a card that needs some pump ups, and they don't they don't generally speaking leave cards, especially champions, unplayable in this game. So champions that are a little bit below the expected power level, you can expect reworks for them eventually. I don't know what their exact timeline is, but I also I also wouldn't be surprised if like they think they have cards in like the next card drop. Because remember, all of these card drops are all part of Call of the Mountain. So like if the last Call of the Mountain card drop has other things that could be good with Tarek, they might be waiting to see what those cards do to the card pool before reworking anything. Yeah, I think people talking about different balancing changes, I think with the design that this card has, I think that they need to make him cheaper. I think a lot of his issue stems from the fact that he's a card that only does one thing and is expensive. We don't have an exact date for the card drop, uh, Bathaki, but they will definitely be in December. I would imagine it will be early to mid-December. We had a mid-October release for the last card drop. 
And especially with holidays uh, being at the end of December, I would imagine that... Uh, although, I suppose we have the date for their seasonal tournament. I wonder, I wonder if they'll do the new card drop before or after their seasonal tournament. For... For the sake of their seasonal tournament being exciting, I kind of hope they do their next card drop um, before before the seasonal tournament. Would be would be sweet. So that way, the the top players that have qualified to play in that will be working on things with the new cards. Having your big big events are always most exciting right after card pull changes. So it would be neat. A lot, of, a lot of different ways they can do it, though. All right, at any rate, that's going to wrap up on Rune Terra for me for today. If you're just here for Rune Terra stuff, I'll be doing more Rune Terra on Monday. I'm taking uh, Sunday morning off. Uh, we're not done yet this morning, though. We're going to be shifting gears to play some Haxity, which is a um, it's a game that's eventually going to have a deck-building roguelike-style feature similar to Slay the Spire or Griftlands, but it currently has a PvP.